Get free tech advice for your business from O2 Gurus. Search O2 Business for more. Hey guys, welcome to BTech. It's Basil here, and today I've got an NVIDIA Shield tablet. Now, the Shield tablet has been running Lollipop in our prior video, but the one we've got here, unfortunately, doesn't have that update just yet, but this video isn't really about operating systems. It is about gaming, specifically emulator gaming. Now, emulators aren't something we can condone unless you've sourced the game yourself via ripping it maybe from an ISO that you have from a disc that you've purchased. Um, we isn't particularly legal, so that's why this video really is just a demonstration as to what you can do on the Shield with the right emulators and the right ISOs. We're not gonna be able to provide you info as to where you can get games for these emulators. The emulators standalone by themselves are by their very nature legal though. So we can quickly jump into a PlayStation 1 emulator and we can start up with a Street Fighter game. Now you can see we've got a load of JRPGs on here, all of which we actually did purchase. Um, if we take a look at Street Fighter Alpha though, a fighting game should illustrate how much latency affects input um, across the two. From our experience, we're gonna ruin it a little bit for you. It does perform very nicely, so any real issues are gonna be down to our inability to play the game. You can hear the stereo speakers in force. If you wanna take advantage of um, the audio from the 3.5 mil jack on the controller, you can as well. Jumping straight into arcade mode, loads up, and everything loads up pretty nice and quickly as well, given there's no disc to spin. If you haven't used the Shield controller, feels incredibly comfortable, very ergonomic, perfect uh, to wrap your hands around and lots and lots of input um, op configuration options. But the application will automatically map everything incredibly well. Um, and yeah, so it's really nice that if you do get a Shield, you're gonna be supported unlike with a lot of other gaming centric devices out there. So we started off using the analog stick, but that wasn't gonna happen. So as you can see, pretty easy to get to grips with on here. If we jump out of that, we can actually open up the same emulator. We should have just jumped out of it regularly. And we can run another game. Now, the next game we're gonna run is gonna be a JRPG. It's gonna be Chrono Cross, so we can whack that open. We can actually press the back button so that we can load a save point. And this actually bypasses loading times really nicely, as you can see. You can see we've saved the game this is a 3D game, albeit not that intensive, but we're gonna let you in on a secret. Nothing on the PlayStation 1 is gonna to be too intensive for your um, Nvidia Shield. Everything will play back very, very nice and smoothly. And you can see, we can run around, we can talk to people, and it's all very nice and comfortable to play on an RPG like this. What's great about it also is that, thanks to the mini HDMI out, you can actually hook it straight up to a TV, uh, making for a really nice, nostalgic, retro gaming experience. Um, as much as we'd love to carry on playing Chrono Cross, we're gonna jump straight out of that. And now throw something a little bit more challenging um, in the way of the NVIDIA Shield, and that is our PSP emulator. The PSP is more demanding. We'll close up the old emulator. And you can see we have a few games on here. Um, we're gonna actually jump straight through to Street Fighter Alpha 3 Max, and we're playing that because it's a lot quicker than the PlayStation 1 version, so it is worth just taking a look at very, very quickly. What's nice about uh, PSP is that um, the nature of the games are they're created for a more widescreen system, which is actually the same aspect ratio as the Shield. So if indeed you do have your PSP ROMs that you have legally ripped off, that would be a perfect, perfect platform to play them on, especially with a larger display. Again, the button mapping on the PSP emulator is really nice too. So it's virtually identical in terms of the gaming, but you'll definitely see you have a lot more speed on there, um, which will make it a little bit harder, or a little bit easier, depending on the kind of player that you are.
So yeah, not doing quite as well this time around. But nevertheless, still really, really good, really playable. Um, and until a Street Fighter game comes out for uh, Android, that's really good. Could be the only option out there for people. We definitely recommend the PSP version. So now we can try something a little bit more 3D. Um, the next one up really is gonna be Dissidia. Uh, Dissidia, for anyone who doesn't know, is a fighting game from Square Enix. Uh, and it requires a little bit of a setup, so bear with us while we go through that whole process. So now we can whack up the volume and 3D games work really nicely. At least this one does. And again, minimal latency, looks really good. So that was the Cydia. What we can do is jump out of that though and open up another game. And this is gonna be the final game we're gonna play. It's worth uh, stating the obvious. Other 2D games and basic 3D games play back beautifully like Blaze Blue. But if you do go to a more challenging 3D game like Gods of War, that is when you're gonna jump into a few issues. So God of War, sorry. Immediately, you can hear some stutter there. You can see it's not the smoothest. So it, it's affected in the audio, but if we jump straight through to a new game. Immediately, you just need to listen to that audio and see how slow that's going to recognize the actual in-game performance on a 3D game like this is gonna be pretty terrible. Now, we haven't actually had any success with this game on any device that we've used, so that shouldn't be seen as a reflection of the NVIDIA Tegra-powered uh, Shield tablet. But don't get your hopes up if you're a massive God of War fan and wanna play it on here. Now, there are a few tweaks that you can make uh, you can apply to the actual emulator. So jump into game settings, for example, flip frame skipping up to maybe skip five frames at a, a pop, jump out of that, and immediately it performs much, much smoother. Is it playable? Not for us. We'd still say that the graphics and the whole gameplay experience was too juddery to really enjoy, and there are such awesome games out there that are optimized perfectly for this. So 2D games and basic 3D games, perfect. More advanced 3D games and specific titles, not always gonna be so. As you can see though, not the worst experience in the world and pretty neat to be able to say, I'm playing God of War on my Nvidia Shield tablet. Jumping out of that, it's worth also just basically hitting home another few points that were announced today. So Lollipop will be coming to this thing soon. If you're in the US, you can already um, enjoy NVIDIA Grid Beta. Grid Beta allows you access to 20 or so games. If you're in the UK, and these include Super Street Fighter um, 4 Arcade Edition and Street Fighter X Tekken, if you're like us and big Street Fighter fans, or if you're more into FPSs, you've got other games like Borderlands, etc. Really cool games. 20 games are worth around 400 or so dollars um, for free. In fact, more than $400. So that's very cool. And that's coming to the UK December the 2nd. Um, ultimately, the take home from this, therefore, is if you do play a lot of emulated games, this will be awesome for it. Um, and the controller adds a whole new other dimension to it, which is way, way more usable than a touchscreen. The Nvidia Shield is also beautifully oriented towards gaming, thanks to that kickstand and those front-facing stereo speakers. Ultimately, therefore, is it the ultimate gaming device? probably for an Android. If you have any questions about the Shield tablet, fire them in the comments section below. If you like the video, click like and share it out. And if you like BTEC in general, make sure that you subscribe. Thanks for watching.